I have been saved for 34 years. I was saved on April 25th, 1987. I have been in many churches. I have left churches because of their worldly ways. I have been asked to leave churches because of my stand where the Bible is and where their stand isn't. I have met a lot of preachers and teachers, Sunday school teachers. And I have met a few that are liars. I have met some that alleged a lie. I have seen many Christians believe the lies out of the pulpit. I've seen many people believe the lies that come from the government. And the lies that come out of the fake news. And this study is to realize we are in a world of liars. And the thing is, we are all capable of lying. I have lied. But I think it's an evil, wicked sin. For a pulpit, whether it be a pastor, a preacher, a Sunday school teacher, evangelist, whoever, get in a pulpit and lie to the people. Now, some of the lies are, you know, they're jokes and they're preacher story, and it gets the people. <laughs> a lie is still a lie. One of the lies, as I said, is a preacher story. There are stories that preachers tell, and what they do is they put the story to their own selves, though they never lived it. It's a story. It's a lie. We have Christian movies today that are promoted by churches, and yet when that movie, when that man says his name is Sam, and his name is really Tom, and he says on the screen that this is my wife and that's not his wife. Those are lies. And then they go preach about Hollywood. The evils of Hollywood. What about the evils of church movies and Christian movies that are not telling you the truth? We're surrounded by lies that the fact that the devil who is the liar, John 8, 44, if you turn there. He's even got the Christians deceived. In John 8, 44, ye are of your father the devil. And he's talking to, to the religious of Jesus' time. And the Jews and the religious leaders that are giving Jesus a hard time. He says, ye are of your father the devil. In Jesus' day, God, who is Jesus, is calling the religious people of his day, you are like your father. Who is your father? The devil. I want to bring that into this message. The lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And they have got crimes of killing the prophets. And bold not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. But when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar. That's what we're going to talk about. And the father of it. So, come to realize, when we lie, we are taking the, the father of the devil. There's no lie is of God. The foundation of lies are Satan, the devil. And when we tell a lie, again, these were the religious leaders of Jesus' time. Now, Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. And we're looking at Satan appears before Jesus, I mean God in Jesus. 
and Job 112. Oh, oh, oh. Job 1 9. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for naught? This is Satan speaking. Hast thou not made a hedge about him, about his house, and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. That's God's blessing. But put forth now thy hand and touch all that he has, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said to Satan, God speaking to Satan, Behold, all that he has in thy power, Satan's power, only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went from the presence of the Lord. Now we got to realize, that we got to know that anything that Satan does, he's going to get permission from God. God has to grant to him. Whatever, if Satan puts any leader in this nation, this world, God has approval. We'll see. Let's move over to Job chapter 2 for the same thing. Job chapter 2. Verse 2-4. Job 2-4. And Satan answered the Lord. Imagine the devil talks to God and God talks to the devil. Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath, he will give for his life. But put forth thy hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he's in thy hand, but save his life. And Satan went from the presence of the Lord. So, Job is going to be stricken by boils, a medical ailment, by the devil, by God's approval. And I want you to see that devil has power but his power is limited to God's granting him permission or even denying him permission or giving him permission with limitation. We see Job 1 and 2. So 1 Kings. 1 Kings 22. Verse number... And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab, he's the king, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said in this man, and another said in this. So God's in heaven, and God speaks from the throne. All right, who's going to persuade Ahab? And the angels in this hand, angels in his hand, and then cherubim. And the Lord, uh, and verse 21, And there came forth a spirit, and stood before the Lord, and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he, the spirit, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit, who is the father of the spirits, of lies. Who is the father of lies? Like Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2, 1 Kings 22, you have Satan and the Lord talking again. Satan says to God, you know, Job been wonderfully blessed. God said, all right, go ahead, touch the material things of Job, but don't touch Job. All right, God, you know, we got rid of the material thing, but you know, if you touch his health, you touch Job personally, and he'll curse you. To, all right. You can go ahead and touch Job, but spare his life. Now the Lord's up, up in heaven. I, I want King, King Ahab dead. Who's going to help me kill King Ahab? And then up comes his spirit, the lying spirit. Satan pops up. Here I am. I will go forth and will be a lying spirit, verse 22, in the mouth of his prophets. Now, Jesus said, you are your father, the devil, talking to the religious leaders. God says, I need somebody to persuade Ahab to fall. This lying spirit, this devil, comes up to God. He says, hey, I got some prophets that will do the job. And we'll see that in a moment. 
And he said, Thou shalt persuade him, the king, and prevail also. You're going to get victory. Go forth and do so. So here's the lion spirit, Satan, walking up to God saying, Hey, this is how I'll do it. I'll use prophets. I'll use religion. And God permit, God allowed, gave permission to Satan. Go ahead and do it. As God gave Satan permission to get Job's material thing, and as God gave Satan permission to attack Job's medical, but not his health. Now here's a king that God wants to fall, and Satan's going to use religion, false prophets, and lying prophets to persuade this king to his fall. Verse 23. 1 Kings 22, 23. Now therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. And the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. Now evil is not a sin. It's the judgment. It's the happenings after sin. But God said, I put that lying spirit, though it is Satan that done it. God said, I did it. God is allowing Satan to use Religion, prophets, lying prophets to deceive a man here, Ahab the king. Let's go back to Job 1 again. Uh, excuse me, Job chapter 2. Job chapter 2. Job chapter 2. Uh, I mean, that's not here. Job chapter 2. And Job 2 3. And the Lord said to Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him all the earth, and perfect and upright man, one that feareth God, and is to his evil? And still he holds fast his integrity. Although thou movest me, God, against him, Job, to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered. So all the livestock that was killed and stolen, and Job's children that were killed, God said, you caused me, God, to move against Job, Satan. And we read in 1 Kings 22 that God put that lying spirit in those, those mouths of those prophets. Though it's Satan, why is God charged? Because God allows Satan to do it. So here Satan is destroying a, a perfect man's life. Job. Here God's got a wicked king and he wants to get rid of him. Now what can I do? And Satan pops up and what's Satan pop up with? I'll lie. And I'll use prophets, I'll use religion. And when Jesus comes to us in John 8, 44, and says, you of your father, the devil, he's talking to the religious leaders of his day. So we see religion and lies and lies and religion hold together. And yes, I'm even talking about the Baptists. And I'm not talking about just the Catholics. Catholics, the Charismatics, the Jehovah Witnesses, and the Mormons, you know, not just them, also the Baptists. I had a pastor in my house and tell me that I was wrong, that Easter, uh, rebuking Easter and Christmas, that Easter and Christmas are the two holidays celebrated by Christians of the church. That's Roman Catholic thinking, buddy. Easter and Christmas are lies. They have nothing to do with Jesus Christ. They don't have nothing to do with the church. They're pagan. And that pastor goes back to his congregation and they celebrate the birthday, even though we know Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. And we have the resurrection instead of calling it Easter, which when you go by the Passover date, and three days after the Passover date of every year, it does not fall on that Sunday. You know, every year, the resurrection of Jesus Christ does not fall on a Sunday. 
You're lying to your congregation, Pastor. I wouldn't even call you that. I'd to say Pastor because that's the title they're giving you. Within the Greek and all the other nonsense you teach them. That's a lie. And those lies are not of God. God cannot and will not. It's impossible for God to lie. It is Satan. And yet, God gives Satan permission to work in the mouth of all the religions. Whether it be a, a pastor, a rabbi, a priest, or guru, whatever it is. A scholar, a teacher, missionary, whatever it is. If Satan is speaking in that mouth, if that is a lying spirit of Satan, in the prophets, in the priests, in the, the pastors, in the rabbis, in whoever that's teaching the people or any person. Satan, the father of all lies, John 8, 44. And yet, 1 Kings 22, God allowed it. 1 Kings 22, let's go back there. We'll, before we move on, we'll look at that again. 1 Kings 22. Verse King 22, verse number 23. Now therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets. Let's go back to 21. Therefore came a forth a spirit, stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said, with or with? He said, I will go and be, be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophet. The lying spirit. That's the devil. The prophet. That's religion. Ahab. That's the sinner that's going to listen. And God, God allowed it. 1 Kings 23. Job chapter 2. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 11. 14. I even got it highlighted. I'm sorry Facebook can't on the videos you can see the on the screen the Bible the King James Bible by the way let me tell you while you turn to 2nd Corinthians 11 if it's anything other than the King James Bible it's a lie modern Bibles are liars they are of Satan not of God it better be the family of the Antioch Church not the Alexandrian Church and church is a gathering of people. It better not be a Westcott and Horde. It better not be a Sinaiticus or Vaticanus. Those are lies. KJV 1611, that is the truth of God. NIV, New International Standard Version, the Good News, the, the New King James, and, and uh, uh, all the others. Living Bible, all lies. Second Corinthians eleven fourteen. No marvel. Don't you be marvel at that? For Satan, there's our character, has transformed him, transformed into an angel of light. I've seen the light. I was dying on the operating table and I've seen this light. You better be careful. That light may be Satan, and not Jesus. Jesus is the light, John chapter 1. But Satan can be also the artificial light. Satan will lie to you. He'll make you think it's Jesus. And Paul says it's another Jesus. Be careful. Satan will have you to be deceived in thinking what you're doing is right. And according to the Bible, it is sin. Therefore is no great thing if his ministers, whose ministers? Run back to the subject of verse 14. Satan. Satan has ministered. He has the prophets in 1 Kings 22. He has ministers in the church age. Therefore is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as, as ministers of righteousness. 
They look right. They talk right. They act right. They got the right uh, congregation, but they're wrong. They're of Satan. They're liars. I had a woman Saturday. Uh, it's not how my minister sounds like. And I told her, I said, your minister, according to 2 Corinthians 11, may be of the devil. A man that don't preach about hell, a man that don't tell you about repentance, a man that will not lead you to Jesus Christ for salvation, is a liar, is a minister of Satan. A minister that will be, oh, we got 44 this save and 26 saved this week, and we got 144 saved last week, and we had, you know, three pot roast dinners, and we had four, you know, entertainment things, and we, that's a liar. There are Satan's prophets that have Satan's lie that God allowed. Satan is the father of lies. He is the liar. And Paul writes to the church, Corinthian church that Satan could be that angel of light and not Jesus. That he has ministers and those ministers look and act right proper ministers. But they've deceived you. They've lied to you. Well, there's a whole bunch of people. They want to believe in the Pope. And they want to believe in all that other nonsense. Well, what can I do to send for the... And the lying spirit says, I'll go. Wherewith will you go? I'll go be a Pope to them. I will go be a priest to them. I will go be a presbytery to them. I will go be a pastor to them. I will go be a Sunday school to them. I will go be a, to be a scholarship with them. I go there with a, with a perverted modern Bible. I'll go in their church and pretend to be a Christian. I will go to that congregation, that group of people. Satan says to God, I will be a deceiver. As he said in 1 Kings 22. And God says, okay, go ahead. Now why would God do that? Because the worst thing that God can do is give you what you want. People want Mary. They want a woman to save their soul. They want a woman televangelist. Though the scriptures are against it. Though the scriptures say there's one media between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. Mary don't fit. She's a female. But they want a female. They want a motherly figure. They want a man as a pope. They want to the, the have where there's no pastor in our congregation. They just get up and they just have good little talks. We want to be of the 144,000. We want to think we're of somebody special. For our lust, we want to be able to marry multiple wives for our lust. That's what they want. And on God's hand, he will send people go knock on their door, preach on their street, leave gospel track, and leave for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they got perfectly free will to believe or to reject the living words of Jesus Christ. And believe me, when they reject the living words of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, they are believing in the lies of Satan. That woman Saturday went off to her minister. That man is not right. And by chance, if he is correct, and she goes cry baby to him, he said, well, listen, that guy's right. You ought not to yell to him. That guy's getting the scriptures out. He may, you know, I may not be as loud as that guy is, but that guy has, you know, he's got people he's got to compete. He's got the DJ he's got to compete. He wants people to hear him. God gave him a loud mouth to, you, that preacher, okay. He's working with the, he's working right. And the woman's wrong. 
I have met ministers who come across in our midst. They like what we're doing. They praise what we're doing. Hey, there you go. That's someone right. And we've met ministers that come up to us and they defile what we're doing. That's not what Jesus would do. You're turning people away. That's not the message I give my congregation. You're a liar. You're of Satan. You're a deceiver. You're a false. If you were truly a Christian, and you hear somebody preaching the gospel, you hear somebody knocking on doors with the gospel, you have somebody passing out gospel tracts of the gospel, and you get upset at them, there's something wrong with you. Satan don't want the gospel to get out. And Satan's form to the truth of Jesus Christ is, I will give you the lies out of hell. I'll give you false teachers, false prophets, false pastors, false priests, false whatever. And the Christians in the church don't want the truth that when Paul wrote, he says, have I become your enemy because I told you the truth? He's writing to a church. He's writing to Christians. You know who the worst group of people to a public evangelism is? It's other Christians. And the primary cause is you make them look bad. Because they're too scared, too petrified to do anything for Jesus. First John. You better believe that there's liars out there. 1 John chapter 2. Don't you think every man behind the pulpit with a Bible, whatever the Bible is, don't you think everyone like that, they're going to heaven one day. There will be pastors of Baptist churches that die and have died, and their rooming will be in hell, the lake of fire for all eternity. And there will be Baptist preachers that will watch people at the great white throne judgment go off into hell, the lake of fire forever, because they said a prayer they didn't believe. They came to Sunday service, but they didn't believe. They were trustees, but they didn't believe. They were Sunday school teachers, but they didn't believe. They did not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And there are people going to hell, the lake of fire, because the preacher had something other than believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, just be good. Have other things like that. Just love everybody. Yeah. First John 2.18. Little children. John's writing to Christians. It is the last time, as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. The Antichrist. Even now there are many Antichrists, plural. You know, we keep talking about the Antichrist, the Antichrist, the Antichrist. There are Antichrists, plural. Whereby we know it's the last time. You know, we're heading to the Antichrist. We're heading to the rapture of the church. And we ought to realize there are Antichrists, plural. And they're in churches. And they're on the TV. They're on the radio. And they'll visit you in the hospital. They'll come knocking on your door. Your friends will invite you to their congregations. Whereby we know it is the last time. They went out from us. The apostles, they went out from the apostles, but they were not of us. And we'll see in a moment. If they have been of us, if they were true and right, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out. 
that they might be manifest that they were not of us. There are men and women out there. If you read and study your Bible, we'll look at that in a moment. You will look at what they're saying, what they're teaching, what they're using, and and I don't know what kind of word to use. The information that comes from their podium, their pulpit, you would be able to recognize that's not right. I've got ears that when I hear a Bible, and if it's not King James, I ain't the right Bible. I've got ears to hear if I, if I hear someone preaching and they're not they're, they're not sound with God and they're not not right with God, I can hear there's something wrong. I'll tell you what, one of the things will tell you what's wrong. In the break. But you have an unction from the Holy One. Ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it. And that no lie is of the truth. And I said, there's pastors out there, they tell little jokes. They get the congregation laughing. And it's a lie is a lie. There's no truth in a lie. Polka dot, blue, white, cross your fingers, circle your head. We're coming in a landing for a lie is a lie. No matter how, what, who tells the lie, it is a lie. No truth, no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denies Jesus is the Christ? That'd be your Jehovah Witnesses. That would be your Jewish non saved your synagogues. He is an antichrist. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. There are liars out there and deny who Jesus Christ is. Paul tells us there's another Jesus. Someone that tells you to, to, to drink the blood of Jesus Christ is literal when the Bible says it is an abomination to drink and eat blood. It's an abomination that you eat the blood of Jesus Christ. Someone's lying to you. Second John. Second John. Seven. For many deceivers are entering into the world. Who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourself that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that you receive a full reward. If you get involved with these deceivers, there's a chance you can lose your reward. When there's false doctrine, false prophets, false teachers, false pastors, false word of God, you get involved in that. You've been warned. In the judgment seat of Christ, you may have lost rewards. Whosoever transgresses and binds not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. If they teach anything other than what Jesus Christ taught, if they taught anything than what the Apostle Paul taught, if they teach anything what the Bible teaches, if they teach Bible doctrine and they had misapplied the Scriptures, they didn't rightly divide the Scriptures, then they are wrong. Nowhere, nowhere in the church age did it say to go build an ark like they did in Tennessee or wherever that is. It's in the Bible. We're told to go preach the gospel. 
Anyway, we we'll invite them to the church. Bring them to the church Sunday morning. Bring them in. Bring them in. Bring them in from the field of sin. No, Jesus said, go preach the gospel. Paul, Peter, James, and John went out and preached the gospel. Nowhere, no time did they invite them to a church. Until probably after they were saved. If there come any unto you that bring not this doctrine, this teaching, receive them not into your house. Now let me tell you real quick what the churches did back then. They met house to house. They went house to house breaking bread. They went house to house prayer. They went house to house reading. That house that it's talking about is not only your house where you live with your wife and your children. It's also the place where you meet as a group of Christians. I have been in churches where they bought false doctrine into their church. They have brought people from colleges that defiled the word of God. If you have a Jehovah Witness that says that Jesus is not God, and they say it, you have no right to invite that person into your house and you have no right to invite that person to your church congregation. They don't believe the doctrines of Christ. Don't invite them to your church house. That's what the scriptures say. Neither bid them Godspeed. Don't you tell anybody, have a good day. Godspeed. Have a great day. Hopefully you have a wonderful day. If they defile the scriptures, they defile that Jesus is God. Don't wish them a good day. Don't bring them into the house you live in. Don't bring them into the church house. Bring in a Jehovah Witness or anybody that denies the doctrine of Christ, as many of your religions do. That house is the house of the house where they met. Oh, well, my pastor says bring them to church. You bring them to church, you may have lost a reward that day. Now, you know what they'll tell you, in your house. You know, that's where you live. Really? All right, I'm glad you said that. Okay, one, one piece of scripture I did not have. We'll have it right now. Acts 16. All right, you think so. Now, you, you know, you think wood, bricks, and stone. All right? Acts 16, 31. And they said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Oh, your house is going to get raptured and, and when the church gets raptured? With the garage and the attic and the, and the basement and all that? That's going to get raptured? Then you're thinking wood, stone, stucco, windows, panes, wood. It's not the building. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together in my name, there they are. A minute, so come back over here. Second John. If any, if any come, if there any come on, I'm excited. If there come any unto you and bring not this God, doctrine, Jehovah Witnesses, for one, receive them not into your house. You know who your house is? It's your wife and your children. It's where two or three are gathered together in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't invite them to church. You may lose a reward. Look at verse 8. And don't say good afternoon, good night, have a good day. Verse 10. You could lose a reward. Look at verse 8. And those people are sent out by the devil. John 8, 44, you're the father of the devil. He's a liar. He's the father of life. Jesus speaking to the religious people. And then uh, 1, Kings 20, 1 Kings 22, Satan says, I will be a lying spirit in the prophets, the religious people. And Paul told us in 2 Corinthians 11 that there are ministers that are of Satan. Second John tells us, you better be careful. 
And Second John tells us if there are people who deny the doctrine of Christ, don't bring them into your house. That's your wife, that's your children, and that's where two or three are gathered together. And you're thinking again that church is a building. Your church is not a building. It's a body of believers. You better not bring anybody false because you have a body of believers. You bring a false doctrine or somebody with a false doctrine into your gathering, into the body of Christ. That person may affect the body of Christ as a cancer affects the body. He may deceive the believers. You know, a lot of Jehovah Witnesses are ex-Baptists that got deceived. Revelation. Chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verse 2. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, how thou cannot bear them which are evil. <laughs> that ain't this church age. Thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and found them to be liars. If somebody says, we have the opposites, we can trace our, our being all the way back to the apostles. We have the apostolic session. Our church goes all the way back to the apostles. Where's your signs and wonders? You ain't got them? Then you're a liar. Look at it again. Apostles. They're saying they're apostles. And this is the time that the apostles are, are, are alive and dying. And these group of people say, hey, we're apostles. Religious. Religious. And they're lying. There's Satan again. Hey, go tell, go tell the people you're an apostle. And you're not. You're a liar. You're deceiving. You're a lying spirit. That woman gets on the television. I'm going to hit here, teach you about the Bible, what the Bible says. And tell me what the Bible says that a woman should not usurp the authority over man. Oh, you tag us out of your Twitter account because we give you that, that portion of Scripture. You may tag us out of Twitter, but you, you can't tag it out. The woman is serpent authority over man in the scriptures. Here's a church that found liars. They found a religious group of people. They're liars. And they proved them to be liars. You know what the lies of seeing church age says? All are welcome. Verse 9. Revelation 2.9. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, though thou art rich. That's not our church age. I know the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews. You mean the Mormons? You mean the, the, the principle of the Congregationalists in America? You mean the, the, really the rough structure of the Catholic Church? If you really look at it, they're stealing from the Old Testament? You mean the, the seven-day Adventists that run after the law? And are not, but are the synagogue of, there he is again, Satan. There's Satan working in religion again. Satan is not at the bar. He's not at the bar. He's in religion. He's in the synagogue. He's in the churches. He's in the, the, the halls. He's in whatever you call your building of worship. He's in the mosque. He's in the prison ministries. He's in the school ministries. He's on the street ministries. He'll come knocking at your door. Just like those that are of Jesus Christ, so are the devil that are antichrist. What the Christians are supposed to do, Satan has a troop of people who do what they're not supposed to do. God has a Christ, Jesus Christ. 
Satan has the Antichrist. God has a, a Jesus Christ has a body of believers called the church. Satan has a body of believers called religion. God has a book. Satan has many books. God has pastors and ministers. Satan has pastors and ministers. God has Sunday school. Satan has Sunday school. God has the truth. Satan has the lie. Well, look at Revelation chapter 3. As far as our church age. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. That would be the church age. This is the only place in the Bible where, the, where it references the church as a literal building. Nowhere else in the Bible. But Jesus said, I'm the door. Not me, Jesus. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. Jesus Christ, when it comes to the church age, and glad to see in church age, standing outside the door. The door has been shut to Jesus in the Laodicean church age. If the door has been shut to Jesus in the church, who's inside the church? Satan. Oh, we got beautiful, great, beautiful churches. Look how beautiful our churches. Look at the beautiful altar and the beautiful pews and the nice carpet and the steeple people and all the great things we have. And look at the pictures and the nurseries. Yeah, when the church is raptured, the Antichrist will definitely love to use your building. I got a pastor mad at me one day. He's bragging about his church. I said, well, the church is going to get raptured, right? He goes, yeah. I said, does the church go? He goes, no. I said, would it be great if the Antichrist, when it came to marking people with the 666, you know, the mark of the beat? He goes, yeah. I said, would it be great if he used Baptist church buildings? Oh, that pastor got mad at me. I said, why, pastor? We're not going to use them. And I only thought fire came out of the dragon or the devil. Second Timothy. I told you, the ones that get mad at you will be Christians. Satan is not the bar room. Satan is not at the rock concert. Unless there's a gathering for Christians at a Christian rock. <laughs> Satan has himself inside the church buildings. He's where the biblical Christians are and going. When the sower went out to plant the seed, the first thing that showed up was the devil. Devouring the gospel, the word of God. Matthew 4, Mark 4. So, 2 Timothy 2.15, which you will not find in the modern Bibles. It's only in the King James. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. How do you find out who the liar is? 2 Timothy 2.15 How do you know the church that you're in is a correct church? 2 Timothy 2.15 How do you know? 2 Timothy 2.15 That's how you know. There is a highlight. When you walk into a church and there's a woman preacher, what's the scripture say? When you walk into the church 
He said, you know, we only have church service on Saturday. And you can't do anything on Saturday. You just come to church. You can't do it here. You can't do anything. You, you can't work on Saturday. It's the Sabbath. What's the scripture say? You know, you're to eat and drink the literal body and blood of Jesus Christ. What's the scripture say? It's in the scriptures. Well, you know, we want to marry multiple wives. What's the scripture say? Well, you know, God's going to reward the people for taking care of the lawn of the church. What's the scripture say? Invite people to church. Ask them to come to church Sunday morning. What's the scripture say? You know, there's one particular expression in the Bible. Thus saith the Lord. Because the Lord will speak the truth. But there's also a word out there of the lying spirit of Satan, who is the father of lies, the liar. And we've seen him in religion, working in religion. Not every person behind a pulpit, a podium, a Sunday school teacher, a deacon, not every one of them are going to heaven. And not every one of them is speaking the truth. Or you need to listen to this message all over again in prayer.